All right, now that we have the terminal open, let's learn how to use it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, uh, we talk about tech. More, sp most specifically, how to get into it, uh, how to operate it, how to master it, and actionable tips. We focus on actionable things. We do things on this channel. We don't just talk about. All right, now here I have the uh, on my virtual machine. This is a Kali machine. Your machine might look a little bit different. I have the documents directory open up in our graphical user interface, also known as a GUI. Uh, inside of the GUI on my computer, I have the documents directory open. Also, in the terminal that I'm in, I also have the documents directory open there. How did we get into the documents directory? Well, in order to actually use the terminal, let's talk about what it means to navigate inside of our computer. So, in the GUI, in our Finder, whether you're in uh, Windows, Linux, or on a Mac, you have this ability to double-click and look at your file system uh, using uh, a graphical interface. So here, on, in the graphical interface in my uh, Linux machine, I can navigate to different folders, like my documents, music, pictures, videos, downloads, etc. How do we do that inside of our terminal? Well, in our terminal, we are going to change into the directory. Instead of double clicking, we're going to need to navigate around. We're gonna, we're gonna move around in our file system. So here we are in the documents directory. And you can see that because in our my command line, I have the documents directory, the top level directory where we are uh, listed. But what if we didn't have that in our command line? Your command line will look different than mine. The way that we do that is we want to see what directory we're working in. Uh, we can use a command called print working directory. Also, inside of the terminal, we don't have to type out everything that we're doing, like print working directory. That's a lot of text. Instead, we'll use a shortened version. We'll use the print working directory. That's just PWD if you, uh, if you stand, sound it all out. Type PWD and enter, it'll run that command. The command that it's running, from working directory, shows us the output or in home a user documents. That matches where we are in the terminal or in the GUI. How do we change to a different directory? Well, we'll use the change directory command. And just like the PWD command, change directory is also short. Instead of using change directory, all those letters, We'll just use cd. Now if we just type cd enter, we'll change it to a different directory. What directory are we in now? Well, we can use the pwd command again, and we'll see, oh, now we're in that cd a user directory. This is a special directory. This is called the home directory. How do we change back into the documents directory? Well, all commands, almost all uh, commands in the terminal take what are called arguments. We can pass something to the command by passing an argument to it, or multiple arguments. In this case, the cd command will take a single argument, the directory which we want to change into. So to change back into the documents directory, we'll say we want to cd into documents, and now we're back in the documents directory. To confirm that, let's print the directory again, and we'll see we're back in the home a user documents. Now, in the finder, we can we can uh, see all the files and directories that we have in the finder here. How do we do that in the terminal? We can use a command called ls, that stands for list. So we'll ls the directory. We can see we don't have any uh, files in our document directory currently. One of the things that we can do before we move on and create a directory is we can pass what are called flags to these commands. Pretty much every command you ever use inside of the terminal accepts flags. Now flags sound a little complex, right? But it's kind of like telling the command we want to do something slightly different than we would do if we didn't pass a flag. For example, the ls command uh, itself, if we just use this, we're just saying we don't want to pass any flags, we want to just list the uh, contents inside this directory as we might normally do. But if we pass a flag, 
we'll say we want we'll tell the ls command that we want to do it slightly differently so let's go ahead and instead of just listing the contents so let's list them and uh, all the permissions and and some other information inside of there the way we can do that is by passing a flag the dash l flag now all flags start with a dash so the ls flag that i'm going to pass will be a dash l now if i press enter this is ls space dash l by the way don't forget the space otherwise it will uh won't be able to find what command you're trying to run uh but if i type dash l you can see that it lists that there's kind of nothing in there uh we're listing files in the in a different uh fashion than we would if we just typed ls so to see what i mean we can actually pass a second flag to our ls command the dash l and dash a if we do that we can see that we have actually two directories inside of this command we have the dot dot directory which i'll explain in a minute and the dot directory uh, one of the cool things about flags is we can instead of typing two different flags with two different dashes we can type we can compress them this doesn't work in all commands but most of them you can do it the same way so ls-la is the exact same thing as ls-l space a let's say that we want to create a directory inside of our inside of the directory that we're in inside of our terminal we can do that in the gui by you know, right clicking or going to the new menu and saying oh we want to create a folder let's go and create a folder called stuff now we have a folder called stuff inside of our documents directory let's see if that shows up inside of our terminal ls and i'm going to pass dash l here ls dash l showed us in a list listing format we have a file or folder called stuff how do we know that this is a folder well, if you look all the way to the left hand side, you can see this D. That D stands for directory. It says we have a directory called stuff inside of our documents directory, which is exactly what we have in the GUI. Back in the terminal, if we wanted to create that uh, a folder, we can do that with the make dir command. So we're going to make a directory, M K D I R, instead of typing all about make. We can type make dir and let's say more stuff. If we go back and we look in the finder, we can see that we have two directories, more stuff and stuff. Let's list that in our terminal. We'll do that this time with ls-l. We'll see that we have two directories and we know they're directories because of that D. Pretty neat. What if we wanted to remove a directory? So to remove a directory, let's go ahead and type rmdir, and we'll remove that more stuff directory. Now, let's type ls-l, and we'll see we only have one directory in there now. Pretty neat. We'll go back to the finder, into the GUI. We can see we have just one folder. What if we wanted to make a file? We've just been working with directories, but let's move to files here. One way we could do that in the GUI is we could uh, left click or right click, create a document, and create some empty file. Let's actually do that. We'll create this file, uh, file one. Let's list in our documents back in the terminal. Now we have a directory, and we can see that because of the D, and we have a file, file one. What if we wanted to just create an empty file the same way that we did in our documents directory in the GUI, in our terminal? We'll use the touch command. We're going to touch, we're going to say, hey, computer, I want there to be a file called file2, so I'm going to touch it. If I press enter on that, you can see it right in the GUI that it shows up, and we can see in the terminal that we now have two files one called file one that we created in the GUI and one called file two that we created in our terminal and a directory called stuff. If we want to remove one of these files, we can do that using the rm command. The rm command is basically the same thing as delete. So we're just gonna remove. Let's say we want to remove file one. We'll say remove rm space and the file name. Let's 
list what we have inside this directory again, and we now we just have a directory and a file too. So now a challenge. Let's create a directory called my stuff and move into that directory in the terminal. Pa go ahead and pause this video and try it for yourself. All right, did it work? Did you do it? Let's go ahead and try it. We'll let's we'll make a directory. We'll call it my stuff. And now we will list it in our terminal just to confirm we have uh, two directories inside of documents. And to change into that directory, we'll use the cd command. And now we're in the my stuff directory. Let's go ahead and list and see if there's anything here. There's nothing here because we haven't created or moved anything there. Do you remember how to print the directory that we're in? If you do, we're just printing it. So now you can see we're in the home, a user documents my stuff directory. And if we were to double click on my stuff, we could see that there's nothing in it. Now we're in the same directory. Let's create another file inside of here. If these are empty files, they're kind of meaningless. So let's create a meaningless file inside of here. We use the touch command. To do that now we can see we have one in, in the GUI and in the terminal we can ls-l and see we have a meaningless file okay what if we want to get back to the documents directory well remember when I did ls-la I said I would describe what the dot and the dot dot directories were and how's that time so the dot directory inside the terminal stands for this directory so if I wanted to change into this directory, or I wanted to copy something or create something, I would just use the dot. So let's say that I wanted to change into the dot directory. What do you think that's gonna do? We're gonna change into this directory. We're not actually gonna go anywhere. However, if we wanna go up a directory, we would use the dot dot. So the dot, stands for this directory, but the dot dot stands for my parent directory, or the, the directory that I'm in up a level. Just like in the in the uh, file system GUI, in the finder, we can open the parent folder. Let's do that in the terminal, and we can do that by using cd space dot dot. Now we can see we're back in the documents directory. We print working directory, we'll see we're in the documents directory, and we do ls-la. Do you think that's going to show the meaningless file? Nope. That's because the, me the meaningless file is in my stuff. But it's not in the documents directory. Let's try to remove the directory my stuff. If we, if you remember, we can do the rm uh, excuse me, the rmdir and we'll pass it an argument the argument here space my stuff if we press enter on this it's going to say hey i can't do that because i'm not empty we can't remove a directory that has things in it we have to remove all the things in it and then we can remove the directory although there's an easier way now remember we use the rm command the rm stands for remove if we wanted to remove a directory, we can use the rm command, but be very careful with this. We want to remove a directory recursively. That means we want everything inside that directory to be removed, and then we want to remove the directory itself. The way we do that is we pass a flag, because we're not doing it the normal way. We want to tell the terminal we're doing it slightly different. So we'll say rm-r, and we want to remove recursively the my stuff directory. We press enter here, we'll see that not only did it remove the file in my stuff, but it also removed the directory itself. And we can see that if we type lsh-l, remove that directory. What if we want to move the file to into our stuff directory? We can use the move command. The move command is uh, not move, that's a lot of letters, four letters, but we can just type two. Uh, is nv. So what we'll do in the move command, this this is slightly different than the, all the previous commands that we've used because we were going to pass two different arguments to it. We're going to say we want to move this file to this place. So when I say that, what I mean is we want to move mv file to the source 
to the stuff directory. And now we're telling the terminal that we want to move that, that file to the stuff directory. Let's go and make sure that that's there. But instead of needing to change it into that directory to list the files, we can use the ls-l command again. This time, instead of just pressing enter, we can tell the ls command which directory we want to list. Here, I'm going to say we want to list the stuff directory. And we can see that we have a file too inside the stuff directory. I'll do that one more time. This time I'll use the dot uh, directory to tell the terminal which directory we want to list. So here I'll say ls dot forward slash my stuff. What we're saying here is we want to list the my stuff directory, which is contained in the directory that I'm currently in. Oh. Uh, sorry, the stuff directory. We still have just a file too. Let's press uh, ls-l dot forward slash my stuff, and we'll see the same listing that we had if we were in the stuff directory. Now, if you notice that I use the dot here, or what that's telling the command is that I am in this current directory, and I want to list something that's in this current directory. But what if I wanted to list something in a totally different directory, one that I'm not in? Well, the ls command, and I'll use dash l for now on, uh, we can list not just directories that we're in, or parent, or parent directories, we can also list directories denoted by what's called the absolute file path. So if I wanted to list everything that's in my home directory, I would just pass ls forward slash without the dot home we can see that we just have one direct one directory in the home directory so our ls command we can do home a user and we'll see we have all the uh, all the files that are in my personal home directory let's create a file with something in it there's a s specific command that we can use called echo echo itself imagine if you're like standing on the at the Grand Canyon and you shout hello from the Grand Canyon. That's basically what Echo does. It will respond with the thing that we asked it to echo. So here let's say uh, we want to echo a string called hello from the Grand Canyon. Why would we use this? Well one reason is because we can do what's called a redirection. Instead of printing it out on the terminal we want to redirect this output somewhere. We can redirect the output using a redirection symbol. The redirection symbol is this greater than symbol. It just means, hey, put all the things that I'm echoing out in the terminal into this file. So let's do that here. Let's say hello from the Grand Canyon in a file called file2. Awesome. Now we have file2. But how do we see what's in file2? Well, we're going to use a command that isn't, doesn't sound like it would be obvious. We can use a command called cat. We can just like kind of think of like a cat, like picking out its food and being like, Yow! Cat stands for concatenate. We're asking the terminal to concatenate all the output from something to the output of the terminal. So here I will type cat file2, file2, and we'll see that it contains hello from the game, Grand Canyon. What if we wanted to edit that and say, instead of hello from the Grand Canyon, we wanted to change it to hello from file 2. We need to use a text editor. A text editor, you're probably familiar with one like Notepad or Microsoft Word or Google Docs. The most famous, easiest one to use that's built into all Linux terminals, and I believe it's also on the Mac and on Windows as well, at least if you have the latest version of Windows. This text editor is called Nano. So Nano itself is will just allow us to, to uh, open files, edit files, save files, and things like that. So let's use Nano. And if I just were to type enter right here, we'd see that we have this kind of weird looking uh, interface. We don't we don't actually have this in a file unless we write it out to a file. I'm not going to write this out to file, I'm just going to 
escape or quit uh, Nano. If you look down all the way at the bottom, it has these little uh, commands that we can use. But what is that like hat symbol there? What does that mean? In the Nano land, that means you hold control and then you press the letter that follows it. So here I'm going to use the uh, control key and the uh, X key at the same time. And that's going to say, hey, do you want to quit? You haven't saved this file. I'm, I don't want to save it. So I'm just going to press Y and, oh, uh, excuse me. I guess I do want to save it. So we'll, uh, if we do want to save it, we'll type the file in that we want to save and then it will exit for us. So let's do that again without actually typing anything and quitting. We'll use the control, just like we did a minute ago, the X key, and it will just quit. Now you can see we have file one and file three in our documents directory. We can test that uh, in our terminal. Remember the directory file here, or the directory flag here, and the two different files. Now let's say I want to edit that file too. In Nano, just like we can in Cat, just like we can in LS, just like we can uh, in Move and uh, Copy and Create Directory, let's pass it the flag, or let's pass it an argument, and Nano will take the argument of the file that we want to edit. So here, let's go ahead and edit that file too by just passing it to the Nano command. Cool. This is what's contained in that file too. Let's go ahead and change that from the Grand Canyon to file two, like we said we would do. And now if we wanted to save this, we don't have, just have to quit you know, We can use a different command called write out. Based on what you see on the screen, do you know what, how we would write this out? If you answer control O, you're right. So if we hold control and we press O, because we're writing it out, we will say, We'll give Nano the file name that we're going to write it out to. Here it's already open in file 2, so we'll go ahead and save it in file 2. And now if we want to quit, we can use the control X again, and it will quit. Now let's cat or concatenate all the stuff that's in file 2 again to our terminal. Check that out. We edited the contents inside file 2. If you want to clear the screen, like we kind of have like a lot of stuff on the screen right now. If you want to clear that, you can use the command just inside the terminal. You don't have to be a nano. You can use the com command control L and that will clear the screen. Alternatively, you could just type clear. But clear is kind of a lot of things to type when you can just hold control and press L. Just close it for us. Okay, now that we have some familiarity with the terminal, you're, we're ready to rock. Next time, we'll actually look at doing something a little more useful, like creating a script. See you next time. Oh, by the way, click on the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when we have more videos out.